Hi, this is Wayne here with Chai County Locksmith Service, and today I'm going to be going over uh, the basics of knife sharpening. Um, you know, we took uh, a buck knife like this and we gave it uh, a better than factory edge uh, right out of the box. And this video is going to be posted to a bunch of different sharpening applications that I'm going to be doing in the future. So if you've already seen this part, go ahead and fast forward uh, to the next part of the video. Uh, to get that individual, but this is going to be the basics upon all the knife sharpening that we're going to be doing. Um, the first thing that we need to go over is having, when you when this knife came out of the box, it had a single edge. It's probably about 20 to 25 degrees on, on either side, giving it about a 40 to 50 degree angle total. Um, that's this here. That means that it has one angle and it goes directly from the knife edge, uh, the, the blade, to the edge. Um, what I like to do to get this sharper is put this dual edge on here. Um, and we do that by first making the back cut. The back cut really takes a bunch of material away and then really allows you to get at that edge and put the, uh, the stronger 20 degree edge back on the very tip. So what we're talking about with the back cut is the main part here, taking away most of the material and then that dual edge is just going to be the very, very tip that really interacts with everything, giving it that 20 to 25 degrees again, but giving it to it up here. And then when we go to sharpen it again, you have plenty of room to move and to, to, to bring that edge down. Um, when you get it out of the factory, it just isn't going to have that. So we can explain that a little bit more by looking at this razor blade. And this razor blade is a great way to kind of show exactly what I'm trying to do here. So if you look at the razor blade, you'll see that there are two separate edges on here. And we can roll it down that way to really see it. And this would be the back cut here. And then this would be the main edge up here. And this is what we're after. This is what we're trying to mimic. Uh, getting, if you're going to try and, and improve something, you might as well improve it with the best. And, we'll, you know, everything is referred to as razor sharp. Well, there's a reason for that. It has to have a thin edge to be able to split and cut through things, but it also has to have that secondary bevel to be able to, to toughen it up so it's not just ruined instantly. Um, that, that's what that extra... That's what that secondary bevel does, is it toughens it up and makes it a little bit, well, quite a bit stronger. And you can see, based on this right here, what I'm trying to talk about is this would be a single edge. We can look at it over here, too. This would be your single edge. And you can see it's just one edge that goes directly from the body to the tip. This would be our double bevel edge right here. This has the main back cut with about a 13 to 15 degree angle. And then we come back and we put that 20 to 25 degree. We could even go 30 degree, uh, whatever you like <coughs> for this main edge here. And that's really gonna give this the strength and rigidity to hold up to the abuse. And then when we come back in and we sharpen this again, we're not gonna have all this thickness, this giant thickness right here to deal with. <coughs> we're gonna be right back to getting on that edge and and getting there and polishing it now if we just left it without coming in and, and putting the secondary edge on here then you would have this and it's just too thin and too fragile so if you try and use this to cut on something you know it, it's going to damage that edge pretty quickly whereas this one's going to hold up to it much much better these are the main basics that i'm talking about with this stuff um, you know, as far as what you want to use, I've made my own little custom machine for knife sharpening um, based off of some other uh, designs that I've seen and kind of made my own. I use stones. I use the India stones for polishing. I use the Arkansas stone for the beginning of polishing and, t and material removal. And then we use these oil stones here uh, to, to really take some of the heavier duty material off of there. Um, you can use sandpaper. Uh, and I do too. Um, this is what I use when I really, really want to get a nice, even, controlled edge. We'll start out with a 320, like this, 
Uh, then we'll go to the 600, like this, and we'll go to the 1200, and we'll go to the 2000. And that's about as far as I'm going to go with it, is, is the 2000, and then we go on to the, the polishing machine. You can get your knife razor, razor sharp with this 2000 grit paper. Uh, we knocked, uh, I knocked an uh, uh, ounce off the weight that it took to sharpen this knife. And what I mean by that is, you took a string, you wrap the string around the blade, and then you hang weights on it until it breaks. And this knife out of the package was about a five. By the time we got done with it, with this secondary edge, it was at a four. So we lost an entire ounce of weight, which is pretty much, you know, what that, what that razor is. Uh, that, that's really the way you really, really tell how sharp something is, is by ha adding weight to force an object through it. Then you're going to be able to get a scientific answer as to how much force it takes to pull that through there rather than just cutting paper. Cutting paper doesn't tell you anything about anything. Uh, it tells you if it's fairly sharp and then that's about it. Um, so these are going to be the basics. This is what we're going to be going over. We're going to be using these tactics on all of our sharpening videos. So check it out, um, pay attention, I hope it helps out, and it'll really, 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 really make your knife sharpening experience so much easier if we can get rid of that main amount of material, get that acute edge, and then come back and start working on the main edge. Uh, that's just going to save you guys a ton of time and a ton of money, um, you know, trying different things. Uh, you know, just going over different uh, sharpening materials. Oil stones, I like, uh, India stone, Arkansas stone, and these are just uh, Norton stones. They're about 20 bucks a piece. Um, you can get a clear Arkansas stone, that's about 80 bucks a piece. Um, you know, that, that's kind of an introdu introductory way to do it. Uh, on the cheap and really producing some of the best edges that I've been able to do is sandpaper. I mean, it is unbelievable. Each one of these is comes in a giant pack like this, and you can get this at your, your local hardware store. 2,000, 1,200, 600, and 320. Uh, that's just a good number to start at, and it just creates such a nice, nice edge. Uh, it's easy to work with. Uh, it uses a carbide, a silicon carbide as the abrasive, which is super, super hard. So unless you're sharpening a, a uh, ceramic knife, this stuff's going to work great on any blade. Uh, I, I highly recommend using the sandpaper with a block of wood. It's going to produce some of the nicest edges you've had, and you'll really be surprised on how, much, how long it lasts. Um, you know, this is designed, you can wash this off. This is designed to be wet paper too, and you just simply wash the material off when you're done, um, and, and it flushes out all the uh, metal that's in there and it actually, you can use it two, three, four times uh, without it wearing out. And this stuff is five bucks a piece. So for 20 bucks, you can get all the different grits that you need to be able to really start putting fine quality edges on your knives and your cutlery. Um, it's gonna work on everything from kitchen knives, fillet knives, pocket knives, everything. Um, you know, using that system, we can actually put a razor edge on a razor better than factory just with sandpaper. So that's a great, great, cheap way to get started and get involved with it. Um, of course, there's diamond stones. Diamond stones are great. They last a long time. Uh, they're just really, really expensive. I have one for my kit, but I don't use it that much simply because it's only one. Uh, if I had the full set, I would use it more, but I don't right now. Uh, water stones are great. Um, Water stones don't last as long and they require a little bit more maintenance because the, the, the aggregate that holds them together is actually designed to uh, stick together less than these oil stones. That's kind of the difference between an oil stone and uh, some of the water stones is the aggregate is designed to break apart more on a water stone so you get that fresh sharp edge of the, the abrasive cutting each time uh, you do that, but you also have to flatten your stones back out, and it's they're a little expensive to get into too. Um, you know, thirty bucks to eighty bucks per stone, uh, and you can go to you can go from six to eight stones. You can go all the way to a ten thousand grit stone. So water stones are really nice if you really really want to do some polishing. 
Maybe you've got some, uh, you know, really fancy show pieces, show knives, swords, things like that. Uh, you might be, it might be worth investing in that, that water stone and really being able to put the polish on there to where you can see everything as a mirror polish on that edge. Um, ceramic stones are good. Um, they're pretty cheap too. About 10 bucks to 50 bucks, just depending on what you get. I've got a couple of those for doing serrated knives. Um, they work on just about everything. You can usually get those in a coarse, medium, or I mean a medium, uh, fine and extra fine as well. And they seem to last a really long time. So that's what's really nice about those. Uh, the carbide V sharpeners, just don't even waste your time or money. Um, it's not going to do you any good. It's going to scar the blade and it's really going to kind of ruin the knife. If it's super, super dull, it'll make it seem like it's sharper, probably make it a little bit sharper, but they're really not a good idea. So this is the basics. Um, check it out. I hope this helps some people out. And uh, it, it really took putting it out and laying it out like this for me to understand how to sharpen the knife and be able to put these razor sharp edges on in just a few minutes uh, as opposed to sharpening for hours before and, and not being able to accomplish the same goal. So uh, edge, abrasive, and double bevel angle and it'll make a perfect edge every time. For more information, go to www.tricountylocksmithservice.com. Thank you. Here we got our butter knife, obviously not very sharp at all. Um, I'm just trying to show what you can actually do in a short amount of time. It would take an extremely long time to sharpen this down to the point where it would be sharp uh, by hand with hands, hand tools and hand with, um, you know, grinding stones and stuff like that. So we're just going to quickly... Give that a grind there, or something like that. This is also a great way to figure out how to do this by hand. Uh, grab up your butter knives and, uh, you know, get used to this, holding this specific angle and not getting the whole blade in there. Um, this is a great way to learn how to do that and learn how, you, how it's going to sharpen and behaviors of how your sandpaper and your grid is going to act and behave. Now notice, like I was saying, this whole time I can touch this blade because that big grid is removing large amounts of steel. It's removing the steel before it can get hot and ruin this edge. Even right on the edge, I can touch that. But it's doing the heavy lifting for me. So it's, it's taking care of that main edge. and removing a substantial amount of material until I start to feel the bevel on this side. You can just run your hand there. You won't feel it on this side and then you can start to feel it on this side. We'll run it through this side one more time. And that's pretty good from there. Now we'll go ahead and run this through the polish, uh, the, the 220 grit paper, and we'll go from there. And here's our butter knife, same thing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, place this right on here. And we're just basically trying to cover up the, the heavy grit paper. So all we're trying to do is polish that up. See how that's cleaned up. Move this side. So right 
now already. We're getting a nice cleaned up edge on there now. We can, you know, we've got something we can do by hand. And again, the blade stays cool. It does not get hot. That's the main, main focus is you don't want to overheat anything for sure. Hello, Wayne here with Tri Candy Locksmith Service and today we're going to be checking out this butter knife uh, just to kind of show some of the, the tactics that we do on this um, and, and how it works. One of the things that I just want to show is that we can take an average butter knife uh, that was just as dull as could be in the shelf and put a pretty serious edge on it. So we're just taking this and just putting, you know, just a nice edge on it. We'll run this through the stone sequence and we'll see what we get. We already took the main part of the, the edge off of this. Um, we cut it down. We cut that, made that big back cut on it with the other uh, with the electric sander bit, so that's what got rid of most of it. So now we can really just kind of focus on the edge here. So just take this Arkansas stone. Let's see what that's doing. It really does a nice job of taking off some material, but starting to get into that polish. Those other stones are pretty coarse. This one actually starts to get the polish in there just a little bit. Kind of start seeing that. trying to hit this one at a time. I'm really just putting that final touch on it so it starts to really center that blade up nice. And you can kind of look down it and begin to see what you're starting to create. He's on here. This is an India stone. This is one of the. This is about as far as I want to polish this. You can start going to extreme measures, really, really getting into some really, really fine polishing type situations um, with finer stones or finer um, diamond grits or finer sandpaper, whatever you're using, water stones. Um, but I think doing too much more than this is just really kind of for show. We're just kind of cleaning up the outside edges of this right now. And I'm going to set this out just a little bit more. And we'll really get that bevel pop on here. The secondary bevel is what we're trying to do on this one. Off. Go back to these here. to what we're seeing and then hit it alternatively like so just to really get that last bit of edge down there and we'll do this
Depends how stuff's on there. These just do a really nice job of just, if there's one stone I could have, it'd probably be just this Arkansas stone, simply because it just kind of has the perfect balance of the two of removing material and then putting a nice polish on it too or at least the beginnings of a polish uh, we could leave this done right after this stone and you would have an extremely extremely sharp knife Is just taking out that big scratches and everything in it. And I'm going to actually move these out one more time. Just because this stone is a little bit thicker, so it's going to go ahead and change the angle that I'm actually working with here. Out. I know I said that this isn't the best way, but like this. this is a, obviously a regular butter knife would not do that. So that's how we can take a regular butter knife and using the controlled edges and getting that, getting that, uh, edge system or the, uh, getting the double bevel and just getting this material peeled back, you could definitely do a lot more work. I could sit here and we could do, I could spend hours on getting this thing absolutely perfect. Um, but you can see we have the two different edges and then we kind of rounded that off too. So it's not even two perfectly uh, different edges that come together. It's kind of an edge and then it rounds off. It convexes into the rest of the knife. And really, to take a butter knife from just about as dull as the back side of this right here to, to this state is pretty, pretty decent. I'm going to even shave a little bit of hair right off your arm. So that's how to get a butter knife razor sharp. For more information, go to www.tricountylocksmithservice.com. All right, so check it out here. We got our butter knife, and we got that uh, that big back cut that we put on here, and then the secondary edge up here. Um, this is all just to show just how easy and important it is to take your time and take that make that extra back cut when we're doing this. So this is how sharp you can actually get something something as plain as just a plain old Jane butter knife here. We got three.
and a half. Six and a half ounces. Um, you know, that's not as sharp as some of our other stuff. We're getting about four ounces out of this Markwell arms and uh, about four out of that Skinner right there. But for a butter knife, that's not too bad. I mean, this thing, the back was pretty much as sharp as the front of this thing before. And you can see that uh, that's not very sharp at all. So we went from pretty much not sharp at all four, five, six, seven, And that's really all the weight I've got almost here. Oop, there's another half right there. So same string, same everything. And that's all the weight I've got. And that's not enough to break that string. So if we add it up, Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve ounces of weight, pretty much, is what we had hanging off of there. Um, so it cut that in half. Uh, and that's just a plain Jane, no fancy steels, just a plain Jane butter knife. Um, so that's what you can accomplish with just a little bit of time, a little bit of skill, and a little bit of practice. Butter knife to razor sharp, pretty much.